Hello everyone, I am back with some more important Viva questions. So let's start the video. All right, so our first question, explain the structure of an antibody. So the answer is an antibody is made up of four chains, two heavy chains and two light chains. And these chains are joined together by disulfide bonds. Now, each chain has two regions, the variable region and the constant region. The variable regions are present at the tips of the heavy and light chains. And the constant region are present in the remaining part of the chains. Now let's understand the important component FAB and FC region. FAB region is formed by variable region and part of the constant region of both the heavy and light chains. And this is the region that binds to the antigen. This is very important point. FAB region is the region that binds to the antigen. The FC region is made up of constant part of the heavy chain only. And this region helps in interacting with immune cells and other immune components. Coming to the terminals, the amino terminal is present at the tip of the variable region. And the carboxyl terminal is present at the base of the FC region. And there is a hinge region between the FAB and FC portion. And this provides flexibility, allowing the antibody to move its arm and bind antigen at different angles. So this is the complete structure of an antibody. So next question, define immunity and its types. So first, immunity is the defense mechanism of our body that protect us from the harmful effect of pathogens like bacteria, viruses or foreign substance. Next, let's talk about its types. First is innate immunity. Innate immunity which is non-specific and present since birth. And it act as a first line of defense. So let's talk about what comes under the first line of defense. Physical barriers like skin, nasal hair, mucous membrane, sweat, saliva, all these help in physically blocking or flushing out pathogens. Next, we have chemical barriers. For example, acidic pH of the stomach, lysozyme in saliva and tears. They help destroy microbes before they can harm. Next, second line of defense. Second line of defense gets activated during infection. This includes fever, which raises body temperature to slow down the growth of microbes. Inflammation, which bring immune cell to the infected site. So in this way, they protect us from harmful effect of pathogens. And the cell involved in innate immunity include neutrophil, macrophages, natural killer cell, dendritic cell. This is a very important question, the cell involved in innate immunity. And all of this together form our innate immune system, which gives immediate but non-specific protection. Now let's talk about the second type that is acquired immunity. Acquired immunity is the immunity that we develop during our life and it is specific and has memory. It is of two types, active and passive. In a simple word, active immunity is when our immune system is active and healthy and makes antibodies on its own. While passive immunity is when our immune system is weak or compromised and we are taking ready-made antibodies from outside. Now, both active and passive immunity are further divided into natural and artificial types. And their examples are very important for Viva. So let's look at the examples now. So first is natural active immunity. After an actual infection like chicken pox or any kind of infection, our body naturally forming antibodies. This is known as natural active immunity. Second, artificial. After vaccination like tetanus or hepatitis B, our body makes antibodies against the vaccine antigen is known as artificial active immunity. Next, passive immunity. Natural, mother give antibody to baby through placenta or breast milk. This is the natural passive.
पैसिव इम्यूनिटी आर्टिफिशियल आर्टिफिशियल रेडीमेड एंटीबॉडीज आर गिवेन थ्रू इंजेक्शन लाइक एंटी रेबिस्टीरम और टिटनेस इम्यूनोग्लोबिन सो दिस काइंड ऑफ इम्यूनिटी इज नोन एज आर्टिफिशियल पैसिव इम्यूनिटी so next question what are the functions of antibodies so antibodies perform neutralization which mean they block toxin and viruses second antibody tag pathogen for phagocytosis which is known as opsonization antibody activate complement system to kill microbes antibody clump pathogen together for easy removal and antibody helps our immune cells to kill infected or abnormal cells okay so the next question what is a zone of equivalence so first understand and when an antigen reacts with an antibody the result depends on how much of each is present so there are three zone we need to understand first pro zone in this zone the antibody is in excess and antigen is less so the test may show no reaction and this can be this can lead to a false negative result second zone of equivalence here the antigen and antibody are in equal amounts this is the ideal condition they form a large complex which we can see as a, a visible precipitate and this mean the reaction is positive and third is post zone now the antigen is in excess and antibody is too little again there is no proper clumping the test may look negative so the next very important question what is the basic principle of elisa and the answer is very simple elisa works on the principle of antigen antibody interaction followed by detection through enzyme substrate reaction that produces a color change now various questions can be asked from elisa like its type so yes there are four main types of elisa direct indirect sandwich competitive another very common viva questions which enzymes are most commonly used in elisa so the answer is horse radish peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase next very important question what are the applications of elisa so again elisa is widely used test so here are some main applications number 1 used to detect infections like hiv hepatitis b and c dengue covid 19 it is widely used in test for pregnancy also used for measuring hormones like insulin tsh it is very helpful in identifying allergic reaction in patient and it is used in cancer diagnosis to detect markers like psa and it detects toxins contaminants or pathogens in food samples next viva question what is the substrate used in elisa for horse radish peroxidase enzymes so the answer is tmb which stands for tetramethyl benzidine and this tmb uh, gives a blue color which later turns yellow after adding a stop solution and this color change indicates a positive reaction next viva question how is the result of elisa read so the answer is by measuring the intensity of the color change using a spectrophotometer or elisa reader so next very important question which type of antibodies are used in sandwich elisa so in sandwich elisa we use two types of antibodies number 1 capture antibody it is coated on the microtiter plate and this antibody bind to the antigen present to uh, in the sample second is detection antibody this antibody binds to the same antigen of different epitope and this antibody is linked to an enzyme like hrp and when substrate is added this enzyme gives a color change which shows the test result so capture and detection antibodies used in sandwich elisa next question which antibody is first produced during a primary immune response so the answer is igm it appears early in the reaction and later igg is produced for long term protection 
Next question, which antibody can cross the placenta? So the answer is IgG. It is the only antibody that can cross the placenta from mother to fetus. Next question, what is the principle of Coombs test? So this Coombs test is also called the anti-globulin test. Its principle is it detects antibodies or complement proteins that are already attached to the surface of RBCs. Next question, very important, which reagent is used in the Coombs test? So the answer is Coombs reagent, also called anti-globulin reagent. And this reagent contains antibodies against human IgG antibody and complement proteins. Next important question, what is the purpose of adding Coombs reagent in the test? So the purpose is to detect sensitized RBC, meaning RBC that are already coated with IgG or complement. On their own, these RBC don't clump. So we need to add Coombs reagent and it bridges these coated RBCs causing visible agglutination, which means the test is positive. Alright, that's all for this video. If you found it helpful, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.